Hi everybody, this is Kate Haley with Glazer's Camera. Thanks for joining us today. I think it's Tuesday. The time since, tends to run uh, a little bit long for us these days, right? We go day to day and never know. Uh, so I always have to look at my calendar. But today's Tuesday and today we have a really awesome event that we've lined up with uh, the folks at Camera Bits to talk about photo mechanic. Um, before we get to, the, to that, I just want to take a moment to talk about Glazer's Camera and how we're operating right now. Uh, starting this Sunday, the store is now going to be back to being open seven days a week. So that's really fantastic. So if you've been dying to come in on a Sunday, guess what? We are now open again from 12 to 5. Our hours Monday through Friday are 9 to 6. And on Saturday, it's also 9, to, 9 six. to 6. All right. So we're back to our normal hours almost. So 9 to 6, Monday through Saturday, 12 to 5 on Sundays. Our rentals department is also open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6 for curbside pickup only. So if you're interested in renting gear, please give them a call to book your rental and then schedule that uh, curbside pickup time. Uh, with that said, uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, we're gonna talk about using Photo Mechanic. This is really kind of a one-on-one -on -one to get you started in that program. A lot of you have asked about doing something uh, with these guys and we finally have it. And so we're really excited um, to talk more about workflow and how you could get started with this program and how it could work for you and uh, the way you shoot. But before we start that content, I'd love to introduce you to Mick Orlowski, who works with Camera Bits, um, and have him tell you a little bit about him and what he does with, photo, uh, with uh, Camera Bits and how he uses Photo Mechanic. And then we'll dive into the presentation. So Mick, can you tell us a little bit about you? Uh, thank you very much, Kate. And uh, also thank you to Glazers for this opportunity. I'm a, a big fan of Glazers. Whenever I'm in City Saddle, I uh, like to come in there and browse. So hopefully I'll have a chance to do that again soon. Um, so yes, I'm uh, Mick Orlowski. I'm a photographer in Portland, Oregon and I'm the director of marketing for Camera Bits. Uh, I'm also a freelance sort of event and live music photographer. I've been doing that for about 15 years now. And um, yeah, that's, uh, that's live music is my favorite thing to shoot. And a photo mechanic has become a big part of that. I wish I had known about it when I was shooting festivals in, in California back in the day. It would have made my life a whole lot easier. Oh, I can imagine. Uh, after spending some time with the program, I can definitely see how that program would have benefited you back then. Um, it's cool to know that you uh, love photographing bands. I've done that off and on over the years, and it is one of my favorite things, too. Um, so it's awesome to also just get to know you a little bit. Um, let's talk about Photo Mechanic. This is kind of like uh, been, we talked about it being kind of a one-on-one. -on -one. So um, why don't we do some screen sharing and get us started? And if you guys have questions about the program, workflow or any of those kinds of things, please feel free to post those on the YouTube chat or on the Facebook live comments. And we're gonna to get to as many of those questions as we can during the session. Uh, some questions we may hold till the end, um, but this is a great opportunity to get a peek under the hood, see how the program might work for you, and then also ask those questions. So don't be shy, post those questions, and we'll get to as many as we can during the session. All right, Mick, I'm gonna let you go for it. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Kate. This is, uh, like I said, thank you for the opportunity. So Photo Mechanic, um, a real brief history about Photo Mechanic. Uh, Dennis Walker, who started Camera Bits, was at the Super Bowl in, in 1998, I believe. And uh, it was one of the first years that the AP was, uh, photographers at the Super Bowl were using digital cameras, this whole new thing. And they, he was uh, kind of on the sidelines with them as they were trying to deal with their, their digital files. And he noticed that, you know, they were really having a tough time. Uh, any, anything that came through in uh, portrait, like they had to turn their heads, like they couldn't even rotate a, a picture to review it. Um, it was really, really archaic. And he said, wow, they really need a, a tool to sort of handle this large volume of photography photography at this event and that was really much how how photo mechanic was born and he's we've been doing this for ever since then so photo mechanic has been around for over 20 years now and we've put a lot of uh, a lot of work into it to try and make it the best it, best thing it can be now photo mechanic is what i like to call an image viewer and a metadata engine um, it's built to handle like i said a, a large amount of uh, digital photos to go be able to go through them uh, do a calling session or review and do that very quickly. Like the, the whole point is to be able to do things, say if you have a thousand images and you need to find the three to get onto the wire before halftime, um, that's been typically the, the main use case for photo mechanic in sort of a sports photojournalism sense. Um, as, as cameras have progressed and advanced over the years, um, 
going from you know one one frame per second to three frames per second to five to now 20 or more frames per second um, we found that this uh, program is very useful for for other types of photographers as well um, like i said when i shoot uh, concerts and music events um, you know i i have deadlines as well so hitting deadlines for me is very important and photo mechanic is great for that and we've heard from a lot of wedding photographers as well um, that photo mechanic, and this is one quote I love that said, photo mechanic gives them their weekends back. They were, they were spending hours in Lightroom calling um, and photo mechanic was able to, to cut that down to, you know, 20 or 30 minutes or depending on the shoot, just really save them uh, a lot of time. And so that's why we like to, to share this with as many people as possible. So let's uh, take a little, take a quick tour of photo mechanic as I have up here. Uh, these are some photos shot by my friend, Craig Mitchell Dyer. He's the, a team photographer for the Portland Timbers soccer club. And um, these are some of his photos that he shared with us. Um, I'll be used for this uh, portion of the demo. Uh, so this is photo mechanic. This is, this main area is what we call the contact sheet. Um, it's, these are the thumbnails of a, um, basically that came in from one particular shoot. Over on the left side here, we have the navigator. Uh, now this is very important. The navigator is a view into my hard drive. And one concept that's very important to note when using Photo Mechanic is Photo Mechanic looks at, at um, folders that already exist either on a memory card, an external drive, or your hard drive. It doesn't, by default, it doesn't create um, like waste. It really, you're really just viewing things as they exist. So when people say, like, oh, I brought my pictures into Photo Mechanic, you're really just using Photo Mechanic to look at a folder on your computer. This is a, um, a folder I have with these particular photos, but I can go into here into like my pictures and I can look at uh, any other folder, photo I would want and like open up that folder and it will show me all the photos in that folder. So that makes sense. Um, up here we have favorites. So if I have a favorites and do things like that, um, you can control the size of your thumbnails over here. I can, I can make them larger if I want to see them like this. I can make them smaller. Here's the here's how I'm sorting uh, the images right now. They're sorted defaults to sorting by file name, um, but I can sort by capture time, modification time, uh, color class, any any sorts I can think of. I can reverse it. I can show all selected tag. A lot of these things here. And over here in the upper right, very important are the uh, the ratings and the color widget. Um, if I want to only show star rated photos, or if I only wanted to show photos by color class, I can do that here. Um, for example, if I option click the blue, I can show just the, the photos that are tagged blue. Um, same thing with the stars. So that's, uh, this is, that's just the basic of the, uh, the, the main interface. Now, if I want to take a look at any one of these photos, double click on it, it opens up what we call the preview window. And it shows you a large view of that photo. Um, a lot of the embedded EXIF data is over here. Um, things you might need to know. And uh, here's the, the film strip and you can have the film strip either on the bottom or the left side, depending on how you wanna do it. And you can now scroll through these photos. And as you can see, it's very quick. It doesn't take a long time to load. Um, these are JPEGs, so that's pretty obvious. But even when you're using raw files, um, Photo Mechanic uses the embedded JPEG preview that um, most modern cameras include in RAW files. Even if you only shoot RAW, like a lot of people shoot RAW plus JPEG. If you only shoot RAW, it's important to know that your camera also does put a JPEG in that RAW file because when you go when you're on your camera and you press the play button to go back and review images, obviously your camera is not going to be. RAW file, it's going to show the, the image so that when you're going through these images and you're looking for something quickly, it's able to do that very quickly. And you can scroll through this stuff very, very fast. So that's, uh, let me, now let's talk about the use case. As I said, photo mechanic is used to um, handle, so say you go, and you go to a shoot. I've got a demo here on, on my memory card of a sort of an engagement shoot. And I want to go and show that process. So 
and up comes the ingest dialogue. And this is kind of controls the ingest process is what we call copying from the memory card to um, either SSDs, whatever your main, main drive is. Um, you can ingest images from your card into a number of different places. You can do two at once. You can have a primary destination and a secondary. So let's just pick this. I like to create oh, just sort of like a staging area. So look, I'm going to do a new one here. Let's go. Two. Okay. There's a lot of choices and you can do location. You can create, have photo mechanic create dated folders. So a lot of people have to create folders. Photo mechanic will do that for you. Um, you can copy raw and non-raw, just that's the default. But if you want to, if you only want the raws, if you only want the non-raws, you can do that. Um, if you're, if you're shooting and you, you know, you have a winner, you catch one, you say, that's great. You lock it in camera and you want to get that process real quickly. You can copy just the locked photos. That's, uh, that's a very powerful one. Wow. Now, I've called Photo Mechanic an image viewer and made it metadata engine. And what I'm going to show you right now is the metadata IPTC template. Um, this is sort of the heart of metadata in Photo Mechanic. We know pictures are worth a thousand words, um, but without metadata around them, it's hard to understand what those words are. So I'm going to call this up. This is the metadata IPTC template. Uh, IPTC stands for the IPTC, which is a standards body, global standards body that uh, sort of sets policies and standards for how metadata is used in, in the world of photojournalism. So we keep that in there, uh, but it's really not important to know. But here's where you can add captions, headlines, keywords, as everyone knows, very important. Um, down here, I have information about like my copyright, um, rights usage terms, things like that. You can put information about the event. You can put information about where it was taken. Um, there's model statuses here. There's uh, things for clients, things for your contact information. Um, all sorts of metadata that you want to add to your images. You can do that while they're being copied over. So you don't have to make it a separate step. And uh, it's also important to note that this dialog, you can customize this. If there's a lot of these fields you don't want to see, you can, get, you can uh, remove them so they're not cluttering up your, your template. But if I were to, um, so I'm going to ingest a engagement shoot, I believe is on this card. So let's, and one of the most powerful features of photo mechanic is something we called variables. Um, and I'm going to show you what those are right now. And if I put in a variable, in fact, let me just show you the variables panel just to give you an idea of what we're talking about here. So these, this is all data that the camera has already written into the file, things like um, the aperture, um, shutter speed, um, size of the photo, and other things as well. There's a lot of these variables. And so I'm going to, well, I'm writing a caption here. I'm going to say, put in the variable. Let's see what I think. So it's going to put the month name, the three day, the three letter abbreviation for the month name. It's going to put the day. And it's going to put your four. So let's go ahead and just to show that, we'll close the template and we'll ingest these files off the SD card. So here we go, popping up these images. These are uh, raw files. And you can start working on these. So typically what you would do is now you want to go through and call these. So you'll double click this and it comes out. And as you can see, even though these are raw files, I can still very quickly burn through these if I'm, if I'm starting to add ratings to these. So I might say, okay, I want this to be color class green, green, oh, like that's a blue. So I can start doing my call here, right? And these sorts of things. I can go very quickly. I can go from image to image to make my call. And if I need to zoom in on something to check focus, I just hit the Z key and I can do that. Um, this is sort of the, the, this is the, what I hear from photographers is like the most impressive part of photo mechanic is the calling process, how fast they can go through a shoot and go through and rate these. And then you'll have this here. And as you see, the color classes were added. And if I want to just take a look at the reds, I can do that. Greens, that sort of thing. 
So now I'm going to call up um, a met the metadata info for this image. And oh, I actually have a lot of metadata in here that I've already added from different things. But here's, um, as you can see, things like this where we've added the year and it goes in and creates the year automatically. So like you don't have to, you, you can create that a caption that has the year in it and you don't have to update it every time the date changes. That's sort of the one of the speed saving features of Photo Mechanic. And as you can see, we, now this is the whole shoot and I can go here and call and say I want to say the greens are the one I want ones I want to start post processing. So I can go in here and option click green. I can select them all, and from here I can drag them into Lightroom. I can drag them into Photoshop. I can drag them into uh, whatever I want to use to post process these images. Um, Photo Mechanic is designed to be used alongside of like whatever your post processing workflow is. Um, we've gone through a lot of. Uh, We've done a lot of work to make sure it's it's compatible with as many things as possible. So that's that's a very basic um, sort of ingest process, ingest and call workflow with Photo Mechanic. Uh, some of the other things I wanted to talk about, um, unless we have any questions, I should check now and make sure we haven't gotten any questions so far. Uh, hey Mick, we do have hey. one question that came in about keywords. Uh, so is there any concept of a keyword library like Lightroom has with nesting, et cetera? Um, That's a great question. So we do have, you can either do standard flat keywords or Photo Mechanic does also do uh, structured keywords is what they're called. Um, and we can take a look at this here. Image. So you can have a keywords panel right here. So. If I wanted to import a list of keywords from somewhere and keep from a thing, I can do that. Uh, I can create a master keyword list here. I can like load it to a master keyword. I can save to a master list. Um, so I can keep this keywords panel open while I'm going through these images. And like if I have a, uh, so let's just say head room on here and I can go through and just double click and apply those to either the selected photos or whatever and add keywords to that. Um, let's talk a little bit about structured keywords. We had the structured keywords panel. Um, as an example, I, I only, I don't have a, a large amount of structured keywords in here, but structured keywords for, if you don't know about them, they, they do have sort of a taxonomy so that, um, say you were you're doing some animals here, right? We have pets. So if you tagged something with say um, kitten, you would also get the keywords cat, pets, and animals added all these like sort of uh, synonyms. So if you're going through and searching that way, you don't have to like do a lot of these synonyms. They, these are all done in the structured keywords uh, panel. Um, there are entire sites dedicated to structured keywords for, for downloading these sort of uh, hierarchies that you can do, um, or you can create your own. You can just get in here and start, um, you know, like I said, you can load some from externally, but you can create your own as well um, if you want to put in the work. And I'm not, uh, it's not the not the quickest thing in the world to, to create some of these things. That's why there are sites devoted to it. But if you want, have something for your own, you can definitely do that. Well, and for SEO, I could see that coming in really handy, where if you like mm -hmm. build out some of those that are really specific to your business and for SEO to try and get you know, more reach, uh, that could definitely come in handy. So that's a really cool trick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Um, actually, while you, brought, while you mentioned the SEO, I wanted to, uh, one other thing I'd like to, I've, I've had on my mind recently is, um, I don't know if you saw it in the news, but Google Images is going to start surfacing uh, licensing information for photos. Uh, this is kind of a big deal. Uh, I know a couple of outlets have covered it this week. Uh, but if you have metadata either on a website or in an image file itself, if Google images catalogs or uh, um, indexes that image and someone finds it in Google images, it will surface a link both with uh, licensed terms, like what you can do with the image, whether it's all rights reserved, whether it's a Creative Commons license. And it will also give a link to where uh, the end user or the searcher can purchase that image. And both those fields are available in Photo Mechanics uh, metadata templates. Um, so I just really want to call that out because that's a big thing. So if I were in yeah. here and if I went down here, I have copyright URL blank, but if I put in 
my uh, my copyright URL, which say it was a Creative Commons, they have different URLs for different one of their licenses. You would put that in here. Um, and then if you come all the way down to the, uh, oh, let's go to, let's see. So in the, we have a, a whole licensing section here and we can add, um, there's a URL for purchase under here under the licensers and you have the URL, if you put that in there, um, it will show up. I believe they said it's going live um, within the next few weeks on Google Images. So that's a, that's a big thing and a very, uh, I just did a blog about it on the Canberra Bits blog. So I can put a link to that uh, maybe in the chat later on or, or somewhere else if you're interested in that. But that's a, it's a very big deal, I think, for a lot of ph photographers who want to, you know, keep control over their images and, right. and try to get some, some more exposure that way. Well, and that's, so if you're baking that information into your file when you export it, um, then that becomes embedded. So if someone mm -hmm. finds it, they can find a link to sell, to buy it or license it or whatever. Exactly. So, yeah. Now we, we know that a that. lot a, a lot of social media sites um, end up stripping metadata, mm -hmm. but if you have a site like Photo Shelter or Smug Mug or something like that, yeah. they do keep the metadata. So that's very important. Yeah. That's well, and I know some of sites. the and some of the social like Flickr keeps the metadata and automatically adds it to keywords. Um, I think some of them do that, but I don't know that all of them do that. But yeah, that's that's a really great thing to hear. So uh, yeah, definitely uh, send me the link to that and I'll put it in the description for the YouTube video once it's live. Cool. So yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> All right. So I want to... Oh no, I was just gonna say, let's keep going. <laughs> sure. Um, so that's, that's the basics. Oh, I want to talk a little bit about searching. So I'm looking at Photo Mechanic on a Mac. And if you're on a Mac, Photo Mechanic can leverage... Um, Mac OS's built-in spotlight search in this search box up here. So if I needed to search for something on my Mac that I know spotlight search can find, like a JPEG, this is and this is generally better for JPEGs. It has sometimes has a tough time with raw files in Mac OS, but if I want to search there, I can do that here. But if I want to actually find something in a contact sheet, say I have several hundred images and do that, I can also call up a find dialog and I can find, I can narrow my search to any little bit of metadata that I have in the image. If I'm searching for something specific, I can do that as well. Um, so finding images and the, so managing these images and moving them around is another um, sort of important thing. So say you've done through this, gone through this and you've, you want to um, now do something. I, I mentioned sort of dragging the images to um, Lightroom or Photoshop. But if you want to move photos around, remember, because this is just looking at a folder structure, if I say wanted to move these um, green images to a different folder, I can just drag them right over here into my navigator structure. So if I have a, I'm a folder here, I can do that. I can drag them into a folder that I've created. Or we have this uh, very, very powerful um, copy move dialog, which I'll come up here. So here's... Um, you know, instead of just, if you want to move or copy some images, this gives you all the power to do that in a very fine, fine grained way. Um, we can apply some more metadata templates to images when I copy them. So if I'm say I'm copying them to a client folder and I need special metadata that only the client will see, or if you want the client to not see certain metadata, you can apply a template that erases metadata just on files that you're moving. Um, there's a, you can create like a subfolder. Um, and again, you can use the variables. So now if I want to create a subfolder and I say, but I want the date in there, I can put the date. Um, let's see, I think date sort will work. And let's see. Yeah, so you can put, you can create folders with these variable names. And what I like about that is like, it, it, you don't have to type in all these numbers. You don't have to type in all these names. Uh, in fact, I'm going to, I'm going to show the rename dialogue and that's probably a better pace to show this, but say, say I want to rename some files and uh, let's do this here. So let's say, say, mm. so as you can see, if I want the date sort in there and I can put in the original frame number. So it will have, I, I will rename these to the, the original date and uh, the date. So I can just do that and rename all my files in one pass um, with this one variable string and handle them all at once, which is kind of cool. Um, if I want to put a sequence number on there, if I want 
I can add that. So I can start with 001 and go through. I can start at a different number if I need to start like at the end, something I've already done, I can do that. Um, so that's another powerful sort of management tool within photo mechanic. And like I said, this is all very, very fast. You just call these up. Um, knowing the keyboard shortcuts is very handy, of course. Um, as I, if you're using photo mechanic, uh, that was command Y gives you the copy dialog, copy move dialog and command M does the renaming. Uh, another popular tool within photo mechanic is the adjust date and time. Um, and I find this turns to be a very powerful feature for wedding photographers, especially when they have second shooters who forgot to set the date and time in their camera. So let's go back here and say if I had a lot of images and I wanted to go to the tool and I wanted to What you can do is adjust the date and time for one photo or for say the, the key photo, or if you have your photographer, say you have a second shooter, just tell them to take a picture of a clock and they can actually do this after they get home. And as long as they haven't changed anything on their camera and say they forgot to check the date and time, they can take a picture of their phone or something and they can adjust um, the relative um, date and time on these pictures. So say they got home six hours later and they said, oh, I wanna do that. You can do this and you can adjust the date and time to all these photos in one click. Um, will kind of adjust the time relatively. Um, so it's, it's, it's very possible. I've heard from a lot of wedding photographers that it has saved so much time for um, when they have d dealing with multiple shooters. And it's not just wedding, but any, anyone who has a crew of photographers, whether it's covering uh, a, in, you know, a music festival or, or a sporting event or what have you, that's a, it's one of the, the most <laughs> loved features I hear from talking to users of Photo Mechanic. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk to you on something a little bit more. Um, uh, I don't know if we have, yeah, we have time. It's only about- Do we have, can I, can I ask a couple of quick questions before yes, we please. dive into more things? So sure, sure. Um, I, I have three questions so far. Uh, well, three more questions actually. So one question is, how does it handle the situation where you accidentally have two files with the same name from two different cameras? which could happen, it's an unlikely situation because you know those file names can often be in the thousands, but have you had that happen? Mm -hmm. Would it overwrite one? Um, how would that might, how might, how might it handle that? So as I said, these, these pictures are always in a folder. So by the time it exists in a folder, it's difficult for that file to have the same name um, because whatever you're using, whether it's your computer or your camera, has probably already renamed it. So that's how that's normally dealt. If Photo Mechanic tries to move, like copy photos that from a memory card to a folder that has that, it will append, I believe, um, I believe it's either a one or an A or a B or something like that, but it, it will automatically rename them and, and not overwrite them. Yeah, when I was looking through some of the preferences, I saw the A, B, C, so I bet it does an A maybe. Maybe mm -hmm. that's what it does. Um, so, uh, a friend of mine actually, who's tuning in and watching this, um, we've had conversations about Lightroom and other programs over the years. So is a trial a full on version? So if you download the trial, is it the full experience? Great question. Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Um, I mentioned, I wanted to talk about this up front, but, um, photo mechanic for a new license is $139, okay. uh, for an upgrade from a previous version, it's $89. Okay. Uh, we do currently have. And uh, I'll, I'll let your let the viewers know this is about to change. So if you want to get on this quickly, you might want to jump on it. But right now it's a it's a full 90 day trial of Photo Mechanic. If you okay. go to camerabits.com and, and um, get a trial there, we're going to dial it back to 30 days. We had okay. changed it to 90 days for the because of the the COVID outbreak. All right. To give some folks a bit because we figured a lot of people would be at home with a lot more time to spend on maybe wanting to manage their images. Yeah. But we're going to dial it back to 30 days sometime in the next month or so. So if okay. you want that 90 day trial, I would say jump now. on it now. <laughs> um, um, but when we do the, the 90 day free trial, it's completely like there's no limit to the number of images. It doesn't put watermarks or anything like that. And we're also proud to offer free tech support to trial users as well. If you oh, wow, that's download amazing. it and install it and say, I want to like, help me work out my workflow. I'm having this problem. How does phone mechanic work? How does it do the specific thing? Call our support. And it doesn't matter if you're a trial user, we're, we're happy to give free tech support to trial users as well. Okay. That's really awesome. Um, and then one more question that we have had come in so far. Um, 
Is there any discussion about maybe doing a version for the iPad, maybe like an iPad Pro, since those are a bit more robust now? Um, or if not an iPad, uh, does your software work on like Surface if people have things like that? So, uh, Great question. I would not expect an iPad version in the near future. It's something uh, we definitely want to do. We've heard the need for it. I personally know the need for it. I would love to be able to sit back and do do a culling session um, away from my desk sometimes. We don't currently have uh, developers for the for those mobile platforms. Gotcha. Um, and, and getting them up to speed and porting that code over is not easy. Right. Even it's it's very difficult. It's yeah. it's something we know we, we don't currently have the development team for it. Um, so I wouldn't expect it. Now I do currently I also use a surface and you can use photo mechanic on a surface. Okay. Um, something you may be curious about is the touch screen and it can be a little bit dodgy using a touch screen to do some of these things like checking selections and and adding things it is possible to do but it's not maybe not as uh the u the ui is not tailored for gotcha um for things like that if you use a stylus it's certainly a lot easier right um but obviously the the if you have a like the the keyboard with uh, that goes with the the um the surface that's that's uh, usable as well, but it's, I wouldn't say it's the best experience using it just as in terms of the tablet on the surface, although it is usable. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, I was, uh, I saw someone post that question. I was curious too, because I've been using an iPad pro for some things over the years. Um, and there mm -hmm. is a nice convenience, um, about being able to work from one device to the other. Um, so, you know, in our day and age, everyone has a tablet instead of, uh, you know, buying right. a new laptops sometimes. So, it's always good to ask. I have I have seen some folks who were able to use the tablet as a, a mirror for their like their iMac or their mm. their uh, MacBook. So you're where it's actually running in the MacBook or the iMac, but you you see the 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 iPad as sort of like the um, the, the screen or the display. Yeah, and that's there, there's some some possibilities with that, but that's kind of a workaround. And you know, if you get it working for you, that's awesome. But it's it's not something where we have a ton of experience with. Not there yet. Okay, cool. Um, well, those are the questions we've had so far. It sounds like you have something else you wanted to dive into. I did want to show real quick, just for some folks, one of the other sort of huge um, features of photo mechanic that's a, a little bit technical, but I did want to touch on it because it's very, um, it's one of the things we're known for, and that's our code replacement uh, feature. And this is mostly used in sports photography. Um, I don't want to remember if I have a code replacement file. So basically the, the, the thinking behind code replacement is that you could have something with that you type a, just a few keystrokes or a number and it will expand into a larger um, text string. So let's uh, go through this. And I think I have a code replacement file I can actually demonstrate here. So let's um, set code replacements. Do I have one? Okay, let's find this. It may take me a while to find this or not too long, hopefully. PM parts. Oh, here we go. So yeah, we'll do this. Open. So we'll add that. Delimiter characters plus. So let's uh, let me call this over here. Let me get this find our window here. PM parts. Let me show what this code replacement's all about. So here we go. Here's a code replacement. It's basically just a, a tab separated value file or TSV file that has these different codes. So on the, in the left-hand column is a code on which we have your PT4, PT6, and it will expand to different numbers. So if I want to do a caption, it will have the actual um, player names in here. Um, this is super useful, as I said, for fo sports photographers, both domestically and this is even huger in the Olympics because with all the different, many different countries and unknown uh, athletes, having all their bib numbers in, in one of these files is uh, very, uh, very helpful. So let's, let me show how this works. So we have this and we have a photo here. We have uh, Diego Valeri, number eight. And say I want to like start, I want to write a caption. I put in here equals... PT8, that's better work. And it expands 
instantly to Diego Valeri. So if I'm writing captions, I'm a sports photographer, and I'm like, I, I need this to get, you know, like I said, by, by halftime or by the end of the quarter, I need to get this on the wire. Having these code replacements is a very, very powerful thing to help you sort of beat the photographer next to you to get uh, to get your photos on the wire before they do. Because as you, as you might know, like that's sort of the, the crucial thing when you're a sports photographer, especially covering these events. The first person to make it on the wire um, will end up getting sort of like the most popular a photo and, and that's uh, that's huge. I wanted I, I wanted to show that f that feature. Um, there is an entire site that uh, that's not us. That's actually run by a third party that you can subscribe to that will give you these code replacement files for most of the major sporting teams in uh, in North America at least and even beyond. I think it's just called CodeReplacements.com and um, you actually have to I think you have to subscribe to it and and you can get those. But if you're a sports shooter. Um, pretty much all the all the major sports shooters I know do that. They just it's just part of their cost of doing business, and they use those code replacement files in Photo Mechanic to do that. Um, so I, I definitely wanted to make sure at least I touched on it. So this you can do a lot of very um, advanced things with that. Like you can do, as I said, PT eight. Let's say two. Oh, let me get that in here. And like you can have multiple columns in that. So if I want the whole like name, I can do different columns in there. And, and it's, it can get very complicated and it takes a little bit of getting used to and learning and trial and error. But once you have it down, um, it can save you so much time as a shooter. And this is when I was shooting, um, you know, Coachella, the, the, the music festival in Southern California. If I had known this and I was writing all my captions at three in the morning in the car ride back to the, back to my place, I was like, Oh, I wish I had this because I would have, I would have been able to get to sleep a lot faster. <laughs> so that's uh, that's a, that's a um, example of that. So can I ask you, that is very cool. Thank you for sharing that. Can I ask you a couple of questions that actually go back to something we talked about before? One of them specifically. Please do. Uh, so the person that was asking about the uh, structured Lightroom, like the structured keywords, um, mm -hmm. uh, was asking, uh, could you import your keyword list from Lightroom? Do you know about that? That is a good question. I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. I know if you gonna... contact our support, I know oh. if you contact our support, they that's something they do deal with fairly help. often. And they could. Okay. Um, I've heard that before, and it, like there are ways to do it. I'm not sure exactly if it's directly importable or not, or whatnot. Um, but there are ways to do it, and our support okay. team does know it. It's not something I've done personally. So I have a, what? A, <laughs> well, I have a more technical question that I'm not mm -hmm. sure I fully understand because I am somewhat technical, but not overly technical. Uh, so, and you might not have the answer to this as well. Uh, does your development timeline include the eventual port of Apple's Mac OS to the ARM processor? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, it's, yeah, it's being yeah, well. it's being just it's being discussed, discussed as we okay. speak um we're definitely well aware of it we're part of the apple development uh thing where we have we've like they that will send you an, an arm machine and we've done that we have it in-house okay. um it, it is something that's on our roadmap i can't tell you uh, right. I, I don't have a date for you i don't even yeah. have a date range for you uh, but, but you guys are thinking about it of. and working on it yeah. so that's yeah. that really answers the question so it's 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 on the roadmap or it's at least in the development pipeline. You guys are talking about it and you know, yep. it, it'll be aware of it. <laughs> something will happen probably maybe, who knows. Uh, it's also, you know, with most companies, you can't talk about a thing until it's actually been announced and released. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> um, okay, more questions coming in. Um, does Photo Mechanic have the ability to add EXIF data? Um, I know that Lightroom lets you change some things, but are you able to, say you scanned like old film images and you wanted to mm -hmm. add like the date time that it, that was shot. Is that something mm -hmm. that you could do in Photo Mechanic? Um, you can add the dates and times um, via the, the adjust date time tool I showed before. Okay. Um, in terms of actual, like the hardcore EXIF data, we generally don't work with editing that, like changing the f-stop or changing the actual model name i will tell you so i do actually shoot film and i scan a lot of film images and if you know exif you probably are aware of um, what's known as exif tool um so i i've found ways to incorporate or work side by side with exif tool in photo mechanic 
and this is this is also kind of a little bit in the weeds but what i've done in on a mac is make an automator action say i'm shooting my leica m2 and i have my 35 millimeter lens on there um what i will have it what i will do is create this uh um, automator action in um, automator on mac os that uses xf tool to tag those things and i can what i can do is select like a number of pictures in here and one of the tools of photo mechanic is being able to um, excuse me, edit selected photos in different uh, applications. So let me show you that uh, in our preferences here, calling up photo mechanic preferences. This is actually a, a very powerful feature for a lot of other things as well that I want to talk about. So we have, um, you can have different uh, things. So if you always use photo mechanic, or excuse me, I'll use Photoshop or Lightroom or something, you can assign that to edit your photos. But say you're like uh, me and I was like, oh, some photos, if I'm doing, you know, I want to open up in Lightroom Classic or some I want to do just in Lightroom. Some, some I specifically know I want to open in Photoshop or something else here. What you can do is in here, you can set custom editors and use up to 10 different editors. Um, so let's, uh, let me just show how this would work. Let's go into here. I don't really, I don't know what I have installed here. But uh, let's say for some re weird reason, I would want to use Bridge. here and what else let's see custom manager one so i wanted that to be um, give me oh photoshop yeah there it is so do that so let's apply that so now i'm looking in these images and i say oh these are three images and i say edit photos with and i can select any of these things that i've put in there so what I could do is I've created these automator actions that would say set um, EXIF to 35 millimeter. And I can create that as a sort of a droplet and use that to, uh, to set the EXIF tool. So that's, I mean, that's very niche use case, but it is possible to use with photo mechanic in, used in conjunction with EXIF tool, um, which is a, it's a third party tool that, that's uh, created to manage the actual EXIF data in, uh, in, both JPEGs and, and RAW files. I have I have two more questions, um, mm -hmm. and then we can uh, and then we have about fifteen minutes left. It's one forty three right now. Um, so one person's asking if you have a photo up in Photo Mechanic and there is a button to say delete, is that like a permanent delete or um, is that just uh, removing it from Photo Mechanic, like a viewer? And my guess is it's a permanent delete because it's um, like it's a file viewer. it's permanent in. It's permanent in respect that it will go to the trash bin, so it's not it's not right. permanent permanent unless it's on a re, unless it's on a removable drive. Sometimes um, Mac OS or, or things don't really handle trash on, on external drives as well, right? Um, depending on your setup. But no, if you do delete this, it will delete it off off the drive that it's on. Okay, and then um, and I know that um, I saw one of the videos that you guys have um, available for Photo Mechanic, and I know you have videos that do this. But since we have folks here. Um, could you show us, like you talked about importing from an SD card, could you kind of show mm -hmm. us like that overview flow from SD into Photo Mechanic, making your selects and then pulling them into Lightroom, like what that flow would look like? Um, because I have a feeling that people that are interested would potentially be using it in that method. You know, we talked about mm -hmm. the culling for event photographers or wedding photographers, um, kind of getting down to the nitty gritty of what you want to import. Um, so I think it would benefit sure. folks tuning in to kind of see that process from like SD card to the call into Lightroom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll run through that one more time. It's, so here's an SD card that I've plugged in and I'm going to put a new destination just because I want it to be brand new here. So let's go to pictures and coming to open. But now what I'm going to do is create, um, I want to into a folder with a name to say, demo and also i'm going to rename i'm going to show this thing which i should have pointed out earlier you can rename photos as you're ingesting them with things like the date and the frame number so i'm going to do that because that's that's just something i do all personally myself just uh so we'll do that and so here we go these are going to come in from the memory card and it, it opens up the thing so what i do is if i'm doing this thing i will 
um, oh, I will double click in the first one. Here's the image, and I'll be like, okay, I want. Um, so I don't know if you use, if you want to use star rating, color ratings as both, but I would go okay. So let's go. I'm going to say um, greens are my keepers. So I'm going to go. No, it's not. So maybe reds are reds are my rejects, and greens are my keepers. Just for this example. Um, no. Yes. Well, or no, let's say three. Yeah. No. 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 Yeah, so like that. So basically, I will do something along these lines, although I might do something a little more fine grained, right? So I'll go through these. Uh, there's a kiss there. Yeah, like that. No, not really. No. no. Um, yeah, so we'll go through something like that. And I'll say, oh, okay, now the greens are my keepers. What I want to do, if I want to bring this directly into Lightroom, is I'll go to my filter. Uh, hold on. I can either, these click turn on and off as you click them, but if you option click, it selects that one and deselects all the others. So I option click green and I will just grab these. And from here, I will drag them into the Lightroom um, icon if I have it down here or Photoshop or whatever. Um, Lightroom is kind of strange in that they, they've been fiddling with the, um, um, the import version, the, the way it imports files. What you should be able to do is if you have Lightroom, you can edit selected photos with Light, have Lightroom in here. And that should work. I've, I've heard from some users that it just doesn't always work as well as it should um, because Lightroom keeps changing, especially with Lightroom, um, the CC version versus the classic version. But drag and drop almost always works. So I'll just Command A to select everything here and I will drag those into Lightroom and then I'm off and running in Lightroom. And it's, it's important to note that these color classes uh, will, and the star ratings and all the metadata will still follow it through to Lightroom. So if I color class these as green, when I drag them to Lightroom, they're going to be color classes green there as well. So, uh, but you have to have the program open to do that? Because when I saw the video, it seems like it was easier. If It's better if it's like in your uh, toolbar or having Lightroom open already to just like drag and dra drag them down in. Um. It will, it depends on how fast your computer is. Okay. Um, it will work if you don't have Lightroom already open, but um, I know on my machine at home, which is a, which Lightroom can take a, uh, a day and a half to open sometimes, <laughs> it will time out. Like Lightroom will, if it, Lightroom takes a little while to open, it will, it might be, uh, it might kind of forget what you were trying to do as it, as it opens. Um, so I would recommend having Lightroom open as you're doing that. Although if you have a fast machine, it should also work that way. Well, and then can I ask you uh, another question? Um, I know that, I think it looks like by default, the numbers are set up to give you the color choices, but if you mm -hmm. wanted to set your numbers up, how do I use the keyboard to do like one, two, three, four, five? Because in Lightroom, historically, Great. I've always used one, two, three, four, five to get my stars. Um, and so how would, how would I be able to do that in Photo Mechanic? That's a very good question. Um, and, that's, and this is actually one of the first things I set up when I'm setting up Photo Mechanic myself. So I'm going to go into Photo Mechanic Preferences here. And um, under, there's a couple of different things. But first of all, in the preview window, these are the, the preferences for the preview window. I can set it to automatically advance to the next photo whenever I change these things. And I always, when I, when I set this up for myself, I'm always, that's the first thing I go into. I should get those checks. So if I, if I change their color class or the star rating, it automatically goes to the next photo and that saves so much time, but we'll say, okay, there, and then we'll go into accessibility and I can have the single key shortcut, either set the color class or the rating, whatever I want. And whatever you, whatever you choose. So if you, if I have the single key to set the rating, I go through in here and I'm like, okay, I'll do this. And I'll go three, two, one, now we have the three star, the two star, and the one star to advance to the next one. So it was very quick. But if I want to change the color rating, I can just use the either the control or the command key, depending on which for colors. I believe it's, uh, um, yes, it's command in the number key. So even though I have it set to change the single key to set the star, if I do command number key, it will set the color. And That's conversely, really if I have this... If I, if, I, if I have the single key set to color, if I do control two, three, or four, it will always set the, the star rating that way. Okay, perfect. Um, I think a lot of people yeah. who are thinking about this program, if they're going into Lightroom, it'll be easier to have that flow set up where your, your numbers, those first five numbers are the stars. I know at least it would be for me. I've been using Lightroom for so long, so having that <laughs> numerical sequence is just kind of what I'm used to. Yeah, you're conditioned yep. to it. <laughs> 
And that's, uh, yeah, like I said, that's one of the, um, I have this set up for demo, so I have it set sort of to default, but when I, on my own personal thing, kind of that's the first thing I go into and change that to rating. And I change the, the single keys as well. So it's, it, once I have that, my calling set, my calling uh, sessions are, mm. yeah. Like I'm just in here and I'm just like, two, one, three, three, one, two. Like that's, that's my calling when I'm calling a, a shoot for myself. Like I'm making snap judgments. Oh yeah. And then, and then I'll come through in here. And then when I'm done, I'll go through and it's like, show me the, show me the threes and I'll go, Ooh, I don't have enough of like them. So I'll go and say, show me the threes and the twos. And then I'll like kind of have them both. And then I'll make like a little more fine grain judgments. I'll think, okay, do I really want to get rid of this or do I really want to keep this? But my, my first pass is always like instant reaction, like the visceral, yep. like does this photo grab me in a blink of an eye? And then that, that's how I make my first pass. And then I can go through after that. And, you know, I talk to different photographers about their processes and, you know, how many people have like they have the three the three passes or the two passes or the four passes or they they go and they have a coffee and then they come back and, and yeah you know there's obviously however you want to do it but yeah i know for me i'll do that first pass like you said you know if it's like for me if it's in the middle it's a three if it's you know i love it immediately it's a five and just like that first like just go through lightning fast and with this program you can really go through lightning fast it's like mm -hmm. i've been a bit floored uh, at how quickly uh, that you can just go through these folders of images and just like scroll and look at things. Um, uh, one more question from Jeff. Uh, he's, he's been asking lots of questions today, which is awesome. Um, do you ignore your non-picks and not import those into Lightroom or, do you, or only, do you only import like what you'd want to edit? Um, I know for me, because of how Lightroom works, I tend to want to keep everything. Um, but having like that culling out of the way in such a quicker fashion can be such a benefit. Um, so, you know, what is your, what is your kind of philosophy on that? You said you've talked to lots of different photographers. Um, do you, do you keep the no picks, the non selects, or do you keep everything? I, I will keep the non selections, but I won't bring them into Lightroom because Lightroom's catalog just gets unwieldy um, and, and slow and, and going things. So I will, try to narrow like i'm i get vicious when i call especially my own personal stuff or if i'm shooting a concert like i'm i want to get basically the th down to three images from from if i shoot like a, a typical two-hour set of a band like i want to get down to three images uh, unless it's a special case so i i just want those three images in lightroom i can keep the the, the non-selects you know on my hard drive somewhere else but i prefer to have like lightroom as tightly packed down or, or, or as efficient as possible um, and I hear from more and more photographers, especially as they, you know, the, like I said, we're shooting 20 frames a second in bursts and whatever. It's you really I'm using photo mechanic to make those decisions first before I get into the post processing. And if I need to go back, I can I can go back into to a folder and find them in photo mechanic and then bring those in if it's the case. But in general, I don't bring my rejects into Lightroom. Well, and that might also depend on like what kind of photography you're doing. I do mm -hmm. a lot of travel photography. And um, I teach workshops on that topic. So I'm always going back in the Lightroom to find images if I want to update my slideshow or find images for marketing them. So even mm -hmm. those threes might become something that I want to use. Because what I also mm -hmm. find is I might come back to an image, you know, we talked about like kind of like thinking on it overnight whether we really love it or not. But sometimes I go back and find things like from a year or two ago that I was like, how did I not ever do anything with this? Because it's really awesome. So I think it maybe depends on like the kind of work that you're doing too. If you're a portrait photographer or wedding photographer, you probably mm -hmm. only need to pull in those selects. Um, I personally have like four Lightroom catalogs now <laughs> that are kind of mm -hmm. topical because of uh, the space they take up on the hard drive with the previews and all of that. So um, it's, it's definitely so been eye-opening working with this program and seeing um, how quickly you can do some of those essential things. So let me, I'm going to show you something here in, in photo mechanic that, that might be interesting. So I've, I have these things and I have, um, let's, let me do a couple of these. One. So say I have three five-star images in this. Um, five. So just, so let's do this. It's five-star images and I'm going to go um, copy move. I go command Y to get to that or select them all. Command Y. I'm going to go create a subfolder. We're just going to call them my five stars, right? 
So maybe these are my keepers. However you want to do, you could do red. And we're going to move them. We're going to take them out of the thing. And we're going to put them in here, five star. All right, we'll move. So now back in my, say now I've gone and I've edited them and I want to go look at something. Back in my pictures, I've created that demo folder, right? And it's created this five star folder. What I can do is, let's, let me close this one first. I can go show me demo and five star. I can right click or control click, say open folder and subfolders in a new contact sheet. Now it's showing me everything in the demo and everything in the five star. So if, if I want to see everything from this shoot, I can do that. And I can go back and go, oh, why didn't I like this three star one and, and kind of maybe change that. And so that's, I can do that in photo mechanic now and I don't have to go through Lightroom to kind of make those decisions. Like I, I like to keep Lightroom just for the, um, the, 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 the amazing pixel, pixel editing processing that it does. It's, you know, incomparable for that. But in terms of just dealing with the files, I, I try to do as little of that in Lightroom as possible and features like that let me do that. So now I can, if I just wanna look at the five star folder, I can do that. Um, so I said, like, these are my keepers that I kept in the five star, but I can go back to the original folder as well and, and, and see either just the, the one, the rejects or just the five stars or both. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I love it. And, you know, as you know, I've, I've been playing around with this program a little bit this past week and I've watched some of your videos and uh, just sitting through this is like, you know, I'm ready to, to go and play more and work with it more. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's so dynamic, it does so much, and there's a lot more to learn. Like, this has just kind mm -hmm. of been like the tip of like, this is how you could get started. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I think we have several people who are maybe using Lightroom and are interested in this product to do a lot of what you talked about, like simplifying the Lightroom catalog, simplifying the workflow, having that much quicker reaction time to being able to call your images, super beneficial. Um, and what you just talked about sounds like a Lightroom collection. Would that be kind of mm -hmm. a, a close way to describe that? It, it could be, yeah. Yeah. Like I said, you could, and there's other options as well. Like say if I just, if I go through and I do my processing, but put my JPEGs in here, if I want to just take all, say I want to take my final JPEGs and put them in a subfolder, I can do that. So then I can have the RAWs in one folder and the JPEG as well. But yeah, I think it's very similar to, to how you would do that. Yeah. Okay, well, this has been really awesome. Um, I know that we've had a lot of great questions. We're getting close to the end of time. So um, do you have like anything you wanna share with the audience before we wrap up? Um, just give it a try. Like I said, there's a, there's a 90 day free trial currently that will be going down to 30 days in the next uh, month or so. So um, go to camerabits.com give it a try, see if it works for you. Um, we want it to work, like I said, we want it to work with Lightroom. We want it to work alongside Photoshop. We want it to work inside Capture One. Um, you know, there's a lot of things you, whatever post-processing you do, you kind of have to learn the, learn the tricks of the trade, but we have like in the, in the preferences, if I go into here, like we have, um, like we have these presets. So like we have, to handle your metadata if you're using these things we have different um you know presets to to set your 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 metadata settings and your your xmp and your you know how you write uh write the metadata all these things we have like presets in here for some of these different products and um yeah we we, we want to work well with as many other programs as possible well and i think this is kind of like when you're bringing when you when you come back from a shoot this is like your first stop Mm -hmm. you ingest those photos, you do your culling, you make your selects, and then you pull them to whatever program that you're using. I also use Capture One. That's my go-to for client shoots. And then I've been editing more and more of my travel work in it too. So, you know, having that accessibility between whichever program you're working in, it looks like it uh, will be a great partnership uh, for sure. So we'll put the link for uh, Camera Bits website on the comments are in the description for the video on YouTube and Facebook. And so take advantage of that 90 day trial. That's amazing. Nobody in the industry does that right now. <laughs> uh, and it's a great way for you to dive in, get some time with the program. And it's also um, a pretty well priced program. <laughs> so uh, for the speed and functionality, um, I feel like it can't be beat right now. So um, Mick, I wanna just thank you so much for your time with us today. Um, I've learned a lot. I think people who are tuning in have also learned a lot. Um, we're just grateful that you want to spend a little time with us and, um, hopefully you had fun <laughs> and, um, 
yeah, it was just, it was uh, great. Lots to learn, lots more to learn. Um, I know that also on the camera bits uh, on your website, there are more tutorial videos. So if you decide you want a deeper look at the program, there's tons of information out there for you to, for you to do that as you're making your decision. So. Um, hey, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. It's been a blast. Um, good. Yes. Thank you. Thanks to you. Thanks to Glazers. Um, big fan. Big fan of you both. So thank you. Well, we uh, it's uh, again, it's great. You're our, our neighbor just down in the Portland area. Um, so hopefully, like you said, hopefully we can have one of these sessions in person one of these days. Um, but for now, this has been fantastic. Um, and hopefully we can get something lined up again, um, maybe a deeper dive into the world of film and mechanic. Um, for those who want to learn more. So we'll, we'll see if we can make something like that happen maybe as we get into fall. So uh, thank right you on. everybody for tuning in. Thank you again, Mick, and everybody at Camera Bits for uh, making this happen today. We really appreciate all your time and all the effort that went into making this happen. So uh, we'll wish everybody a great day. And uh, if you're a Nikon shooter and you're curious about the new Nikon Z5, join us tomorrow evening at five for a first look at the Nikon Z5. Thanks again.